Have you ever wondered how an experienced gardener really starts seeds? I've shown in videos how I use my different mixes and how I use my lights and how I start the different seeds that I'm growing for that year. But I've never really shown the behind the scenes look, all of the gear and gadgets that I've accumulated over the years. So join me today as I give you that behind the scenes look of a seed starting setup. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I've been gardening for a long time, which means I've had a long time to accumulate seed starting stuff. All that gear that just seems to accumulate in time. And let me start off by saying you probably don't need or don't want most of the things that I'm going to show you, but you might get a few ideas because if you're like me and you love gardening, you're always looking for that next thing that might make it a little bit easier, especially as you expand your growing operation. But it can be simple. This is about as simple as it gets, and I like this way of starting seeds. I like taking old yogurt cups and just filling it with seed starter mix or potting soil to grow my seeds, and then putting it inside a reused pie tent to collect any water that drains out. This is really all that you need, but when you start expanding into that next realm of what you want, it can get a little crazy. And so I have a lot of yogurt cups to start seeds in, but I have a lot of other pots in varying sizes because I grow a lot of seedlings to go out into my garden. And I like to start my seeds in the 72 cell trays, so I have a lot of those. And if those little ones aren't big enough, well, I've got some of the bigger cells to start different types of plants as well. In addition to lots of extra trays and a lot more cells of different sizes to start my seeds. And it seems like I run out of trays before I run out of those cells. So I have a lot of extra trays. In addition to the humidity domes, to help keep my seeds moist as they're germinating. Does a typical home gardener really need that many trays and cells and pots? No, I don't think so. But I've got a big garden and I do a lot of experimenting and I get a little crazy with my seed starting sometimes. And believe it or not, last year I ran out of some of the pots when I was starting my seeds, which meant I just bought more so that wouldn't happen again. And how do I fill all those cells and pots? Well, I have three containers under my work table. One is filled with my seed starter mix. Another holds the potting soil mix that I like to make. And this other one is filled with nothing but cocoa core. And to make those mixes, I've got a bag of peat moss, perlite, and vermiculite. And I have a couple different types of compost to add to the mixes. And to add nutrients to my potting soil mix, on the same shelf as my pots, I've got organic fertilizer and things like bone meal and green sand. Again, does anyone really need all that stuff? No, you can just buy a bag of a seed starter mix or a potting soil blend and use those to start your seeds and grow your seedlings. But I like to have more control and I like to save money because when you make it yourself, you can save a lot. So that's the approach I take, which means I need all that stuff to make all of my various blends to start my seeds and grow my seedlings. To make the process easy, I'll dump my seed starter mix or my potting mix into this nice big container to pot up my plants. 
And then I just use a simple tongue depressor to transplant the seedlings into bigger pots. But I certainly don't want to lose or break my tongue depressor during that process. So what does that mean? It means I've got a box of tongue depressors. There are more tongue depressors in here than I could use in a lifetime. So one of the projects I'll be doing this year is using these to make plant tags. You can find more than one use for your favorite tools. Go for it. I really like to use these plastic plant tags during my potting process. So to save money, I buy them in bulk in these big rolls. And I try to reuse them as much as possible. So I may write on one side one year what the plant is, but then I'll cross it off and I still have the other side. So these can last two years. Great way to use something I like and save money. And to mark them, well, I prefer this garden marker. It doesn't fade in the sun, unlike a lot of other permanent markers. So, of course, I have extra so that when these run out, I don't have to lose out on my labeling. And to give me options in my garden, I also have some of these fancy copper plant tags to mark more permanent plants in my landscape. Do you need plant tags like that? Of course not. That's just the way I do it. That's why I've accumulated those type of labels for my seed starting and plant growing. I've also accumulated a lot of different lights over the years as I've tried new things with my seed starting. I have some fluorescent lights. I have some LED lights. I have different types of LED lights. I have square panels of LED lights. I have four foot long sections of fluorescent lights. And I have four foot long sections of LED lights with red and blue colors. Time is one of those things that allows we gardeners to accumulate a lot of stuff. All of these lights didn't happen in the same year. Most of them didn't even happen in the same decade. As I expanded my growing, I added more and more lights and was always trying something new. Things like seed mats accumulate in time. I started with a single seed mat, but as I grew more and more seeds that needed heat and germination, I got a second one. And now I've added this third one from Spider Farmer just this year because it comes with a thermostat so I can control the heat that my seedlings get. Underneath this table with the heat mats are my worm bins and the boxes of worm castings that I've harvested from these worms. There are some things that are necessary, but depending on how you choose to do it, you've got options. I do a lot of watering of my cells with just a half gallon jug of water. For years, I've used this watering can, but my daughter got me this watering can, so this is actually the one that I use most often once the seedlings are growing. And then just a simple spray bottle helps spritz the plants to help keep them nice and moist. But I have a lot of things that could be argued really aren't necessary. I've had these polymer crystals for probably 20 years, and I haven't used them in probably 19 years. These are the kind of polymers that when you pour water on them, they expand. And I had heard that they're great for adding to potting mixes to hold in the moisture. But since then, I've learned about compost and organic material and never use those anymore. I rarely use this rooting hormone. Now I have, and it's here if I need it, but I've done a lot of cuttings without the hormone and they've done just fine. I do have a digital thermometer so that I can measure the temperature in this room. And I like having this, but I didn't have it for most of my gardening experience and got along just fine. This is a fan that also has a heater attached to it. And I occasionally use this with my peppers and tomatoes to put a breeze over the plant, but 
again, it's one of those things that really isn't necessary. Like these lights. This is a light that can be clipped onto a table. There are LED lights that are in blue and red, and I can target the light if I'm growing a single pot of seedlings. But I rarely grow a single pot of seedlings, so I used this a few times and then moved on because I've got all these other lights I'm growing with. I do occasionally use a pH test. and I'm planning on making a video about them, so I got a bigger soil test kit, but this is one of those things that once you've done an initial test, it's nice to have these, but not absolutely necessary. And then there's a couple gadgets here that really most gardeners don't need at all. Here's a mini wand seeder. The idea behind this is that you've got different tips of different sizes and you take this bulb, squeeze it, and then go down to pick up a single seed and lay that single seed into your pot. The problem is it takes a lot of time and when it comes to seeding, I'm kind of lazy. I want to get it done as fast as possible in the easiest way possible. And so while there are some seeds that it might be worthwhile to pick up a single seed and lay down a single seed, I'm okay just using my fingers, pinching the seeds I need, and then putting them in place. I also have this kit that I've never used, but hope to someday. This is a grafting kit and it's got everything I need to graft. The tools to make a cut on a tree branch, and then take another tree branch and use grafting tape to connect the pieces. There's lots of nice little tools in here that I'll become familiar with when the time comes, but that time is probably a long ways away. It's stuff. I got to have the stuff so it's part of my grow room. And all that stuff needs a home. So, of course, I've got another group of shelves just to hold all the extra things that I think I need, like the propagator lids that go with a different size tray and then bigger trays to do more seeding if I decide to do that. I have a food processor in the back for grinding things into smaller pieces when I make really fine soils. I have my overflow of cocoa core blocks, various other overflow kind of items like extra jars and clamshell containers if I decide to grow using that method, extra seeds, cleanup items like paper towels. There are some things that were on those shelves that you might not have noticed because they were buried underneath or stuck in the back. Something like this sieve that I use when I have that bagged compost and I want to get rid of all the big chunky pieces. And I have a simple brush and dustpan for easy cleanup. There are chopsticks that I use for a different method of easy seeding. I've got toilet paper tubes. If I want to use these as containers that I can grow a seedling and then put the whole thing into the garden, got to have a place to store them. They're on my shelves. If I'm making soil blocks, well, I need my soil blockers. So these have a place on those shelves, as do these seed envelopes. This is what I like to use when I'm saving my own seed, and they need a place. The grow room is a perfect opportunity to put them. Almost everything I've shown you today I got on Amazon, and I'll put a link below that you can order some of these if you choose by clicking on that link, and it will help benefit my channel. You don't need any of this. Possibly you need all of it. It all depends on how you want to set up your grow space. I've got room to put all of this. You can keep it simple. Problem is, as you add more and more stuff, you need more and more room to store all of that stuff. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what my grow room looks like behind the scenes.
I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>